This part 85 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss enabling client-side validation in ASP.NET MVC. ASP.NET MVC offers several validation attributes. Examples include string length attribute, range attribute, regular expression attribute, etc. All of these validation attributes provide both client and server-side validation. In the previous sessions of this video series, we have discussed using these attributes and server-side validation in action. In this video, we'll discuss enabling client-side validation. And there are two simple steps to achieve that. Step 1. Enable client validation and unobtrusive JavaScript and web.config file. We'll discuss what we mean by unobtrusive JavaScript in a later video session. For now, understand that both of these options need to be turned on within web.config file. And by default, when we create a new ASP.NET MVC4 application, these options are already turned on for us. So let's flip to the MVC demo project that we have been working with. So within the root directory of your project, there should be web.config file. And within that, look at this, we have this app settings element and we have these two options here, client validation enabled and unobtrusive JavaScript enabled. Both of them are turned on. Okay, so that's the first step. The second step is to reference these three jQuery files. So where am I going to get these jQuery files from? We can either download them from jQuery website or if you create a new internet, um, I mean, new MVC application using internet application template, then you will get a scripts folder and all the jQuery scripts will be there. Okay, so if you're wondering how do we create an MVC application using internet application, that's very straightforward. So here, when we actually go to file, new project, and when we select ASP.NET MVC4 application, once I click OK, look at this, you have the option to select a template. Now, when we created this MVC demo project, we have selected a empty template. And that's the reason why at the moment we don't have scripts folder there. But then when I created this MVC application one, I've chosen a internet application template. So I got scripts folder as well. So let me open this in Windows Explorer, copy all these script files, and then let's go back to our MVC demo project. Let's add a folder to this project and let's call this scripts and let's paste our script files into that folder. All right, so we need three script files, okay? jQuery, jQuery.validate and jQuery.validate.unobtrusive. So on whichever view we need uh, to do client-side validation, we can reference them there. But in real time, we actually reference the script files within the master page. And the advantage of doing that is that this avoids the need to reference them on each and every view where we need validation. But at the moment, we don't have a master page here. So I'm directly going to reference them within the edit view. So let's navigate to the edit view. But before we reference them, look at this. At the moment, you know, 301 age, you know, that's not a valid age. Look at that. I don't get any validation until I click the Save button. So when I click Save, that's when the form will be posted and the validation is done on the server side. Okay, so let's enable client-side validation and see how it's going to work. All right. So let's reference the required script file. So the first one is jQuery script file. So let's drag and drop it right there. And we need a jQuery validate file. And we need jQuery validate unobtrusive. Okay. And let's use the tilde for slash syntax. So tilde. So basically, the still character indicates root directory. So from the root directory, navigate to scripts folder and within them file the required, within that folder, find the required scripts. All right, let's save everything. And let's reload this view. So at this point, the JavaScript files should also be loaded. And look at this, the moment I type 301, and then once I 
click away, I get the validation error message immediately without me having to post back to the server. Okay, look at this name cannot contain numbers. The moment I enter a number there and click away, I get the validation message immediately without a round trip to the server. So obviously this means the application is more res responsive. You get better user experience and this also improves the performance of your application because there are less round trips to the server. So the load on the server is going to be reduced. So just for getting a validation error message like this, there's no point in posting back to the server. Okay, so if possible, always perform client-side validation. And another important thing to keep in mind is the order of these scripts is also very important because jQuery.validate.unobtrusive. This JavaScript is dependent on jQuery.validate and that's dependent on jQuery. So jQuery files, you know, basically they need to be in this order. If they're not in this order, then the client-side validation doesn't work. So if you want to look at that in action, look at this. If I move this unobtrusive as the first file, save that, and let's actually reload this. And let's try 301. I click away, look at that. I don't get any validation. So the order in which you have referenced the files is also important. All right, another thing, actually, let's um, put that back to the right order. And let's reload this view so that the script files will be loaded. And then, look at this. This client-side validation will not work if the end user has disabled JavaScript within the browser. So within the browser, we can disable JavaScript. So at the moment, client-side validation is working. But then if I go ahead and disable JavaScript, and by the way, to disable JavaScript within Google Chrome, you click on the Settings button. And then within the search box, type JavaScript. So click on Content Settings. And look at this. There is an option. Do not allow any site to run JavaScript. So once I select that, I click Done. So at this point, JavaScript is disabled in this browser. So let's actually close this and fire up another browser instance. So we have JavaScript disabled. So now when I you know, type 301 as the age tab away and look at this, I don't get a validation. So the client validation doesn't work in case if the end user disables JavaScript but the server-side validation will continue to work. So when I click Save, the form will be posted and the validation on the server will still be performed. All right. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.